looking towards the end zone, throws, caught, touchdown! Theo Reese Jr. Come on, Cody. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to chase in the hunt, and I set the pace yeah. when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it one on Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome back to Earning Our Stripes this week. I am Brock Gordon, joined by a very tired Benjamin Duncan. We'll get to that story as to why he's tired here in a little bit. Ben, how are you doing this week? Tired, but we're doing good. So, do you want to start with this Mizzou game first, or do you want to explain why you're tired and why you didn't really watch the Mizzou game this week? Um, we'll just do that right off the bat. I went down to Baton Rouge to the LSU versus Grand or the Grand Lake State versus LSU game this weekend, and I was up for a very long time with no sleep. Let's just put it at that. Is it and then beating, I had to go into work for a double shift right after I got back. Is it beating my uh, twenty nine straight hours that I did for Dome Domination? Let's see. For, cause I, I I slept on oh, for a little bit on both flights back, mm-hmm. so I think I was at like twenty six straight hours, and then like an hour of sleep, and then I was awake again. So, or I guess no, I guess my longest is uh, Omaha onslaught, which was thirty, because I woke up at two in the afternoon the day before for work, and I didn't end up passing out till what fucking five. Something like that, yeah. Jesus. No, I was a longer. So yeah, no, my record, my record still stands. Anyway, so yeah, Ben was in Baton Rouge watching a good football or a team that knew a how to play football. football. Yes, a team that knows how to play. Yes. Tigers escaped this week. <laughs> Tigers escaped this week, nineteen twenty-three, over Middle Very Tennessee right. State. Before we get into the stats and everything, Ben, initial fucking reaction. We played like trash. So I highlighted it last week in the Know Your Enemy report. Middle Tennessee State's going to fucking blitz and blitz and blitz and blitz and blitz, and that's going to fuck up the run game. And what happened? They blitzed and blitzed and blitzed and blitzed, and it fucked up the run game. Mm Mm-hmm. So... It's almost like when I do this Know Your Enemy report, I know what I'm talking about because I watch the film of these games. Crazy. Chap, what's in the work? I do, like I did this week, which is why I feel a little bit better going into this game than I would have beforehand. Anyway, you already hit the keynotes here for this Mizzou game? Yes. Uh, Do you want to take a guess as to what the attendance was? Like 48,000. Oh, hell no. You are 10,000 under. Oh, really? 57,645 true sons and daughters packed for Field. Near sellout. Brady Cook, 14 for 19. 204, two touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Cody Schrader, 23 carries, 84 yards. Burton led the... Uh, Receiving attack with eight receptions for 117 yards. Nathaniel Pete and Theo Weiss Jr. each had a touchdown. Gaddy had two sacks, and Cornell and Williams each had one. I'm sure you're going to get into what Middle Tennessee State did. Um, but just off that, didn't throw the ball as much as I was hoping that they would. Yeah. And they're going to need to do it this week against K-State, as I'll get to in the uh, Know Your Enemy for this week. But it's uh, not looking good if you uh, commit to the run as much as Mizzou did and it ended up biting them, uh, which it, 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 ooh, it bit them. It bit them pretty hard, actually. As uh, Tigers. Hey, the the ESPN win probability chance chart says the lowest chance that Mizzou had of winning, the lowest chance Mizzou had of winning this game was a 72.1% chance. 
Yep. That's, when uh, the game was 10-10 to 10 in the third quarter. Again, not spectacular, but uh, there's most certainly worse. Mm-hmm. Mizzou had 46 rushing attempts for 112 yards. That's 2.4 carries, or 2.4 yards per carry. Middle Tennessee State had 71 rushing yards on 29 attempts, 2.41 yards a carry. Mizzou was able to lead time of possession this week by four passing yards. They got beat, but they won total yards, 316 to 285. Uh, What really hurt the Tigers was third down efficiency, seven for 13. And uh, Middle Tennessee State... Converting two of three on fourth downs. So. Five penalties for the Tigers for 50 yards. Middle Tennessee State, six penalties for 42. So. No interceptions by each team. Middle Tennessee State, like I said, threw the ball 36 times. So again, that scouting report, I tell y'all, I pay attention. Mm-hmm. I watch these games. So, Which sometimes is harder to do than others. Case in point this week. You know how hard it was to find footage on the fucking K-State, Southeast, Missouri State game? Man, that was hard. Anyway. Ben, the breakdown for the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders. And how they did against the Tigers. Their quarterback, Nicholas V, as I'll call him. A title. Uh, went 22 of 36, 214 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, rushing was led by Frank Peasant, 13 carries, 35 yards, followed by Nicholas V, 13 carries, 34 yards. Receiving leaders for Middle Tennessee were EJ Met- Elijah Metcalf with five catches, 70 yards. You Justin Olsen past four. week. Justin Olson, four catches, 51 yards, and a touchdown. Jeremy Tate Jr., four catches and 43 yards. And then Kalani Norris had two catches, nine yards, but one of those was a touchdown. Then defensively, excuse me, uh, their defensive tackling leader was Tra Fulin, nine total, six solo, and a tackle for loss. Uh... Devin Curtis, eight total tackles, six solo. Drew Francis was seven total with two sacks and two tackles for loss. Sam Broomfield had a sack and two tackles for loss, along with Quindarius Dunnigan. And yeah, they had a lot of uh, tackles for loss this game. That's what happens when you blitz the uh, blitz a lot. So. And then they were 100% on field goals and extra points. They had two different punters this game. Miles Tillman, three punts for 121 yards. And Trey Turk, two punts for 95 yards. And that is all for Middle Tennessee. Overall thoughts of the game before we move into miscellaneous Mizzou news before we go to Know Your Enemy for the Wildcatters this week. Way too close. Every year there's that one group of five team that Mizzou plays that it's like this. Every year. Uh, A few years ago it was Central Michigan, game that I was at. Uh, North Texas a few years ago as well. Uh, this This is normal for Mizzou. This is normal. They have that one game that they should blow out an opponent, and it's close for whatever reason. So... Not. <laughs> it is what it is. We move on to Manhattan. The 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 boys from Manhattan coming in. So, final thoughts before we move on. I got nothing. Positives that you want to take away from this game. Cody Schrader had 80-plus yards. Yeah, there you go. Uh, My positive is 
Brady Cook looks uh, somewhat competent throwing the football. It's just I wish he would uh, make a little bit better reads and not throw checkdowns as much. So it's about all I got. So uh, defense yeah. doing well per usual again. So mm-hmm. uh, it really wasn't on them this week. It's just the offense couldn't. They had five different times that they could have gone for it on fourth and shorts either in Middle Tennessee State Territory or at midfield, and Mizzou just decided to punt it. So it's not on the defense. On to next week and on to Ben's miscellaneous news here for Mizzou. Yes. What do you got for us, Ben? All right. Well, the way. Um... Let's see. Um, sock, Mizzou women's soccer beat Illinois two to one, winning the bragging rights, Hell and yeah. they beat Mo State two nothing. Which there was a discrepancy. Me and you were talking about before the podcast started. Yeah. Mizzou app said something different. Yeah, the official Mizzou sports app said that they lost two nothing, but they actually won do nothing so Mizzou soccer still only has one loss on the year good job girls Mizzou volleyball on the other hand lost three nothing to Buffalo but they beat Xavier three to two so okay Xavier's the musketeers are they still the musketeers for females or or for women's sports or are they called the lady musketeers I'm not sure I don't know. That just popped into my head. Anyway. Um, the K-State game at Faro is the first sellout since October 12th, 2019 in the homecoming game against Old Miss. I was wondering if you had the uh, the last time that it was a sellout in Faro. So I'm glad you yes. did. Um, Mizzou men's and women's basketball teams will take part in the Mizzou Madness on the Quad, Friday, October 6th at 9 p.m. That's the night before the football game against LSU. So, uh, I kind of like uh, the scrimmages on the quad. I like that idea. It's a good one, and I'm glad they're bringing it back this year. So, I think um, I think that might get even bigger here in upcoming years as they both start getting better and better. So. Mm-hmm. Um, Mizzou hosted the Missouri Intercollegiate Athletics Hall of Fame Class of 2023. Yes. Do you know the people that were in that, Brock? No, no, I didn't have that. I was wondering if you had it. I was looking at the the thing that you had sent me, and I hadn't paid attention to the people's names. Okay, well, damn. All right, then. But they hosted that, and so congratulations to those people. Um... In the the Middle Tennessee Missouri game, great uh, Nathaniel Pete had nine offensive touches for a hundred yards in the touchdown, and he played eleven snaps. <clears throat> and uh, most of those were passing or receiving. So again, yeah, one catch for forty nine yards in the touchdown. Again, he just needs to be a slot wide receiver. Stop trying to make him a running back. We already have Mizzou has their running back. It's set. Mm-hmm. It's the greatest D two running back of all time. Yes. So, um, and the Mizzou game in St. Louis against Memphis starts at six thirty p.m. Kickoff was finally announced. <laughs> the cowards finally announced it. You don't know how happy me and Tommy were when that got announced, dude. I would have been. I was telling my mom the other day, like. If the game was at, like, 11 again or, like, noon or something, we would probably just end up driving back that night after the game. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I'm hoping it's not that and that it's at, like, 6, 6.30, and then we can just stay the night in St. Louis. I think Tommy's because currently working on the hotel arrangements. Not positive. Okay. But, um... Because as he said, yeah, it's it's my turn to get the hotel. I'm like, yeah, it is. Okay. The B-card bank account can only go so far. The one that I had, the one that I had sent... Uh, you guys, uh, me, my mom, and my sister have stayed at that one prior, and it's that's one. It's nice, at. and it is it is outside of 
St. Louis, which is good. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my only uh, downside. And I was telling Tommy that I'm like, well, hey, good news, it's six thirty. Downside, it's gonna be like ten o'clock when we're leaving at night uh, in St. Louis, <laughs> and I'm not allowed to carry. Yeah. So, whoa. and then ah, what the hell? Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to find it or not on here, but okay. maybe. Um. But yes, the Mizzou Memphis game is at six thirty, mm-hmm. which is very good. Uh, extremely good. Me and Tommy actually are going to be able to sleep somewhat before uh, or after work and before we have to get together. And then something that uh, the last random, the last random that I had was this. Okay. Wow. Hi. News on KMIZ. <laughs> The Columbia Fire Marshal tells us the cause of a fire at the Grindstone Walmart is currently under investigation. Thank you for joining us. I'm Hannah Falcon. The fire started just before 5 tonight. Columbia Fire Department responded to the scene. Employees of the Walmart did evacuate once the fire started and were let back into the store around 6.30. And a large cloud of smoke was visible even from far away. Gray Oak Drive was shut down for the response to the fire. The scene started to clear around 6.30 tonight. We are still working to learn more information about how this fire started. At the same time, another fire was reported near Burr Oak Road just outside of Columbia. Boone County Fire Protection District tells me this was a couple of small vegetation fires and fire... But yada yada. The Walmart on Grindstone was on fire for the second time in six months. Stop making meth, goddammit. Stop making meth behind the Walmart on Grindstone. That's the nice Walmart. It do is. It on the one on Con- do, it on, do it at the one on Conley or Broadway. Yeah, shit. That Grindstone one's really nice. Damn. Anyway. That's that all the random? I- all right. What do you got for the mailbag this week? We do have a comment. Of course we do. Last week was the outlier. Mm, let me pull up the YouTube Studio app on my phone. Um, from the one and only Noah, my boy. Uh, um, Noah was saying that hearing that this offense wasn't holding back against South Dakota has me worried about the rest of the season. Yes. Yeah. Worries me too. However, this week, I, uh, I'm going to be honest, I think it's going to be a little different. Anyway, are you ready for... Ooh, I hope. Ready for this? Yes. Can report? All right, gentle ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for Know Your Enemy, powered by bcardentertainment.com. This week, the Kansas State Wildcats for Manhattan, Kansas. The head coach of the Wildcats is Chris Kleinman, who is 32 and 32-30 and at K-State in five years. He is 1-2 in bowl games with a big... Ca- Big 12 Conference Championship last year. The Wildcats beat Troy 42-13 last week. They run a hurry-up offense with a balanced attack. 63 passes to 78 rushing attempts. Starting quarterback is Will Howard for the Wildcats. He's 39 for 58 on the year. 547 through the air. Five touchdowns, two interceptions. He's been sacked once. He also has 11 carries for 38 yards and three rushing touchdowns. He also has a receiving touchdown this year. The Wildcats have a two-headed backfield duo of J.D. Giddens, yeah, Giddens and Treshawn Ward. Each have 27 carries. Giddens has 180 yards on the ground. Ward has 114. However, Ward is the only one with a rushing touchdown out of the two. The wide receiver duo is or trio is led by R.G. Gar, or R.J. Garcia the second, who is R.G. two. <laughs> who has eight receptions for 150 yards and a touchdown. Phillip Brooks is right behind him, 13 for 134 and a touchdown. Jaden Jackson leads all Wildcats in receiving touchdowns with two, as he also has six receptions for 115. Wildcats run a 3-4 defense, three down linemen, four linebackers. They are a veteran defense, as six of their starters are seniors, as uh, only two are underclassmen. The The defensive ends do most of the disruption for the Wildcats, 
as Duke and Matlack have combined for set, or for five sacks on the year. Two linebackers also have a sack each. The defensive tackles combined for one sack. One pick on the year is by Wildcatter Lee, who is cornerback number cornerback number one. K-State defense will mix some blitzes in, but like to have their big boys up front pressure the quarterback as the linebackers come in and clean up the mess left behind. K-State defense has only allowed 76 rushing yards on the year to the two teams they have played. It's Troy and Southeast Missouri State. Neither are known for running the ball as they only allowed Southeast Missouri State one rushing yard. However, they've given up 437 through the air. Mizzou's going to be able to, is going to need to capitalize on Will Howard throwing picks as he's throwing each week. So try to get it through the air on the Wildcats. That's their weakness. Mizzou leads the all-time series against K-State. 60, 33, and 5. K-State has won the last two meetings. Mizzou had won the previous five before that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kansas State Wildcats. And Brock, if you didn't know, um, the ESPN matchup predictor has K-State with a 68.7% chance of winning and Mizzou a 31.3% chance of winning. Yeah. And um, do you know what uh, AccuWeather says for the game time weather for the game on Saturday. Well, I know that it's supposed to be a high of 77 that day with a low of 51, some light cloud cover. So I'm going to say 65 degrees for kick. It says for kick from AccuWeather on here, it says 68 degrees. Oh, my God. Ugh. Night and day from what we had Football last year. weather is back. Night and day from what we had last year. Mm-hmm. Dude, anything would be better than that, to be honest. <laughs> Don't say that. There's some some that I'd rather not. There, I mean, there could be a tornado that comes through the stadium, but I mean... I mean, I would rather not... I'd rather not have, like, 98. Yeah. But, uh, so... Ben, your keys to the game for the Tigers. Um... I think... Let me see. I think a big one would be shutting down wide receiver Phillip Brooks. So if I remember from last year's game and just last season in general, Phillip Brooks balled out. He does lead the Wildcats in receptions this year. Uh, if we can shut him down and then stop the run then I think we'll just have to force Will Howard to throw it to the other two guys. And, <laughs> and Will Howard's a we'll bit of a gunslinger. We'll see how that goes. Will Howard's mm-hmm. a gunslinger. Um, however, they, like I mentioned in the uh, Know Your Enemy scouting report, they do lean on that rush a little bit more as they've ran the ball 15 more times than they've thrown it. Uh, Howard, 39 for 58. Not terrible. But those two interceptions, he threw a pick against Troy and against Southeast Missouri State. This is going to be the best defense that he's gone up against. I think that's going to be the key for the Tigers. Mm-hmm. That secondary, you got to lock down those wide receivers. Won't be hard. Uh, up front on offense, hey, they'll mix in a few blitzes, but damn, they love having their DNs, Duke and Matlack, try to get to you. I think the tackles might be able to shut them down a little bit. Defensive tackles for K-State, a little bit of pushovers, not too much, but you know they're kind of there. Like I said, the linebackers are the ones that like to come in and mop things up. They do run a, uh, what I'm going to call a bandit. I don't know if that's what they call it at uh, K-State on their defense. Uh, Kind of a roving, uh, another term I guess would be a nickel, Uh, but a roving linebacker that just likes to go around and follow where they think they can attack the weak side. Uh, So I do believe that is going to be the only thing they have to really worry on that. Secondary for K-State. Otherwise, that secondary is a young secondary. They run one corner, three safeties. Um, so, yeah, attack the shit out of that secondary. And I think Mizzou's going to be fine. I think Burden might have his uh, his breakout game this year. Same thing with Theo. I would love that. So, uh, another thing they don't do that well is covering tight ends. They do not, for whatever reason, like to cover tight ends. So uh, maybe uh, more fleet might get playing time and I, ball out. Please. I don't know. Uh, if I'm a zoo, though, I'm keeping at least uh, tight end Stevens in chip block at least on Duke because he's the shit wrecker mainly for 
the Wildcats. He gets the most pressures. Matt Lack's not far behind him, but I, it is what it is. Matt Lack mainly just does us good because of Duke. Uh, the only thing is, that is their strong side. Though Both those guys play the same side of the ball. So they rotate in and out, uh, left ends. So that right side, a little bit weaker for the Wildcats. Maybe attack that a little bit more. Hand the ball off to Cody Schrader with a pulling uh, tight end. You might be able to gash them a little bit. They don't like that. They haven't had a lot of uh, fight back when it comes to running the ball. The teams they played this year, like I said, the teams they played are mainly gunslinging teams. you got Southeast Missouri State. You have Troy. Troy's not known for running the ball that much. So uh, that's my keys to the game. Turnover battle, I think Mizzou might actually have them this week. Yeah. So. All right, Ben, it's now time to guess the over-under for this week. You ready for over-unders? Yes. Over-under, Brady Cook, 200 passing yards. Over. Over-under, carries for Cody Schrader, 20. Uh, under. Amount of times Brady Cook gets sacked. Two and a half. Under. Amount of interceptions Mizzou will have. One. And a half. Under. You think they might just get one? Probably. (laughs) And final Amar, rushing yards total for the Tigers. Well, no, second to last. Rushing yards total for the Tigers. 120. Over. Final Amar. Luther Burton recept- er, receiving yards, 100. Over. All right, there you go. That has been over under. It is now time for predictions. Okay. ESPN has the over-under line for the game at 48. Mm. I think it might be over that. I wouldn't be so sure. Or not. Or not. Who knows? So. All right, Ben, it's now time to predict the score. First off, do you have the Tigers winning? Uh, With everything that I've ESPN, presented? ESPN only has K-State as five point winners so with everything that i presented to you the k-state the scouting report which again i've gone over so much film of this team everyone's like oh you're just going to use no no i do so much research on these teams and these games it's stupid stupid Mm -hmm. oh this this memphis one's gonna probably break my brain next week but it would be what it will be. <laughs> Trying to find the game film from Memphis? Dog, like, you don't understand. Let me pull up who Memphis is playing this week and who they've played to show you how hard this is going to be for me. Like, dog, you don't you don't understand. They've played Bethune, Kickman, Arkansas State, and they play Navy this week. <laughs> Do you know how hard it's going to be for me to find footage of that shit? Ugh. Anyway, do you have the Tigers winning or not? Uh, I know earlier on Big Time Talkers, I said probably K-State was going to win it, but... That was before you prevented all this. Yeah, I'll go with the Tigers in this one. Alright, and your score prediction. My score prediction... Let me see... I'm going to go Mizzou 27 K-State 23 23 I'm going to go slightly more conservative than you I think this game might hit the under this week I'm going to say 
beginning of the year, I said Mizzou was going to win this game. I'm standing by that. I think they're going to be undefeated when they play LSU this year or this year in Week Five. Bobby, this is the only this is the only trouble I think we'll I have getting that I know. point. I know. I think Mizzou's going to yeah. do it though. It's going to be close because K State is turnover prone and doesn't run that uh, constant pressure. However, I think after what they saw in Middle Tennessee. Tennessee State do this week, this past week. They're going to try run a few more. I don't know if that's going to be a smart idea because I think they know they'll also get gashed through the air and they don't want that. Mm-hmm. Um, Mizzou also didn't run a lot of screen passes with the blitzes from Middle Tennessee State. So uh, I'm going to go maybe Tiger. The, maybe. What are you saying? Or I was saying maybe Mizzou will learn to put. Um, Nathaniel Pete at slot receiver. I think a wide receiver screen with him at slot receiver would do incredible things. Just saying, but um, yes, I'm gonna go Mizzou twenty four. Now, see, this is how much I think K-State's going to score, though. Because a lot of Middle Tennessee states were fucking fluky that they scored. I'll go K-State... San Jose 24. K-State 20. Um, So... They both have pretty similar... Yeah. Separation and point totals. I was thinking. I was debating if I was going to say twenty four seventeen or twenty four twenty, because I think Mizzou's only score going to score twenty four. Mm-hmm. I think K State's defense is still the best one they're going to run into this year. It's just, it's it's literally going to come down to how much Drink wants to throw the ball. Yeah, that is all it's going to break down to. Mizzou. Uh, I had the breakdown. Hang on. I haven't done it a lot this year. I don't usually do the fucking breakdown for the Tigers. I'll do it this week. Um, Mizzou likes to run the... Mizzou runs the ball uh, two times as much as they like to throw it. 86 carries... Or 86 rushing attempts to 45 passing attempts. Dude, you got to air the ball out more this week. And I'm hoping the reason they haven't is because they just... They've been holding it back and don't want to show all their passes that they have for this game. I'm hoping that's it. Drink, I don't. I know you don't fucking listen, but if anyone on that Mizzou coaching staff listens... <laughs> got to throw the ball at least a few more times this week. Yes. Because... <clears throat> The math. Hang on, I gotta do math real quick. Twenty-two, twenty-two and a half uh, times throwing the ball, or uh, passing attempts to fucking forty-three rushing attempts. I mean, come on, man. Twenty-two and a half. They. Again, that's twenty-two and a half times they throw ball the ball a game to forty-three rushing attempts. They uh, they've got to do better than that, man. They've just got to. <laughs> I can't. Uh. Uh, you ready for some more bright side here for the Tigers? As uh, we've now given our predictions for the K-State game. So, if the C's with the on current on pace, or the current track that Mr. One, Mr. Cody Schrader is on, if things continue the way that they are, he is on track for 1,332 rushing yards this year. As he's averaging 111 carries a, or 111 yards a game, so. 
And if things also consider, or continue the way that they're going right now, Mr. Luther Burden, who has uh, 213 receiving yards this year, would end with 1,287. Receiving yards. Uh, the next closest receiver for the Tigers is Nathaniel Pete, which, yeah, that's great. Uh, he would end the year with 498. So, please, I'm begging you, do do somewhat more throwing the ball and everything. Brady Cook, the same, or if he keeps going the same trajectory he's on right now, he's going to pass for 2,000 yards. That's not enough. No, it's not. So, like, this is a team that just a few years ago, literally, was it five, five, six years ago, or five, four or five years ago, Drew Locke set the fucking passing record for the SEC? So. Yeah. Anyway. Um, last bit of news. This is a programming Ooh. thing. Or do you have something before we get to that? Um, I have an, an update on my end for um, the Arkansas game, Brock. Oh, here we go. Here at the very end of the season on Black Last Friday. Game. Black Friday. God. Um, uh, later today, I will be uh, texting my friend who lives down in Arkansas with her husband mm -hmm. to see if she wants to go to that game with us on Black Friday still. Okay. So, I mean, I know people people do all sorts of things on because that's Thanksgiving weekend, so nice. I don't know if they're going to be busy or not, as one knows. Mm -hmm. But um, if they're busy or or if they're not, we'll, I'll be able to figure that out tomorrow. But with uh, my new job that I'll be starting here shortly, as of next week, um, in the 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 letter of a uh, the the job app the job. Uh, acceptance letter that they'd sent me they sent out a list of all the holidays that i am guaranteed off work mm -hmm. and um i get both thursday for thanksgiving obviously but i also get friday black friday and and so that means i have that thursday friday saturday sunday no work Jeez. i mean i'll be i'll be home for thanksgiving obviously yeah but not having work on friday means that We'll, we'll be able to drive down to Fayette, no problem. <laughs> All right, there you go. Because the game is at 3 o'clock. Yeah, the only thing is my job. That's the only thing. I know I'll be oh, able okay. to get that day off, but that's about it. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, programming news. This is the final Thursday upload. That is correct. So This is the final Thursday upload. Going forward, me and Ben will be recording these on Sunday... Uh, and it'll go live on Monday. So. Where we can react to the game being played on Saturday. Yes. On on the podcast. Yes. That's so. partially just due to um, changing schedules and uh, wanting to get better sleep. A little bit, yes. <laughs> but uh, there you go. So that's the update programming note-wise for EOS. When does this come out? This comes out Thursday, right? That's correct. Okay. So, in case you don't watch the B Card Entertainment uh, YouTube channel, first of all, what the hell's wrong with you? Go um, watch it. Yes. Tommy Haley has served part one of his pun. Well, the first step of his punishment. <laughs> oh my god! I'm throwing shit over here. Jesus. Oh my god. As uh, he has bought Mizzou gear for the Mizzou Memphis game, which do have we settled on a name for that vlog yet? I know there's two that we're talking about. Uh, honestly, the thing I had texted about the other day or whatever was just I, I I couldn't remember what you called it, so that's what I had yeah. called it. M I Z S T L or EOS Return to the Battle Dome. I kind of like <laughs> Return to the Battle Dome a little better. EOS, the EOS versus the Shadow Realm. No, that's no, no. <laughs> anyway, um, he has a hat, a shirt, a sweater, socks. and socks that he has. 
picked out or that he has for this game against Memphis. Uh, I bought new new Mizzou shorts and a new shirt, which I am wearing right now. Ben, your thoughts? Um, nice. I like the shirt and the hat is good. Well, I mean, I've had this hat for a while. Well, yeah. Um, but the shorts, I was kind of worried. They're larges. They actually fit pretty nicely. They go down. They're just above my knee. Just above. Just above the knee. But they're not, not that, But they're not fucking booty shorts on me, so. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I will also get a video of Ben tranding to Mr. Brightside. Do not worry. We, we, we settled on it on the pod, on uh, Big Time Talkers this week. What he'll be chanting. Brock, uh, it's, I mean, it, we still have, like, literally, like, two weeks until the St. Louis game. We have a week. But, er, a little <laughs> over. Yeah. We have a week, sir. When this goes live, it'll be Thursday. Oh, yeah, fair enough. So. But, um, I'm looking at the, the, the weather forecast for St. Louis. It's in a and, dome. It doesn't matter. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, but that outside of the dome. Oh. <laughs> okay. On on Saturday it says, I mean, it's still a little ways out, so it won't be. This is like, long radar. True still. long. Yeah. But um, it says uh, it'll be seventy nine degrees, uh, partly cloudy, with a the high of seventy nine, low of sixty one. Uh. But um. The thing I'm interested in is it says that Friday is supposed to be rainy, high of 78, low of 61. Okay. So, I mean, luckily we're in the dome if it does rain. Yeah. So. so I don't care. It's in a dome. The fuck? Well, yeah. Anyway. Uh, we might do a little bit more than the uh, Mizzou game as well in St. Louis because of the hotel and stuff. But anyway. Yes. Uh, that is all I have. For EOS this week. Do you have anything else? Um. Ooh, I know a really good place. If we get to St. Louis at an early or in that, when are we checking? Like, whenever we'd be checking into the hotel, I'm assuming it would be before the game, correct? That would be my guess, but I'm not the one booking it. You'd have to ask but, uh, uh, I mean, the Nebraska fan. Yes, I would assume beforehand. But that area where our hotel is, there I know a few good restaurants in that okay. area. We got a uh, Sugar Fire Barbecue. The Saint it's a St. Louis chain. Mm. We also have uh, this Mexican restaurant that has duck tacos. The fuck? Okay. Um, and there's some other places as well, but um, yep. yeah. Uh, what's that Sunday's weather looking like? Oh, I just had that pulled up. Give me a second. Um, that Sunday's weather's looking partly cloudy, 78 as the high, and 61 as the low. Mm. Okay. I mean, this is still one, as of this going out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days ahead of time, but... Okay. That's still not too bad. Well, I mean, the uh, St. Louis Zoo is right there, and it's free to go to. So, and I've never been, so. Yeah, I, you know, that couldn't be the worst thing in the world, honestly. <laughs> I've heard really good things about the St. Louis Zoo. It's pretty nice, I'm not going to lie. And, their, and their, um, their collection of hellbenders. What? <laughs> the, the giant salamanders. Oh, okay, I'm like, you're, you're, what? To what? But to what? And to who's now? Uh, I'm trying to find the map of the St. Louis Zoo. Anyway, uh, that's all I have. Ben, where can you be found on Twitter? I can be found at Elite Tiger Sports One, or just the type of Elite Tiger Sports. The E, the T, and the S are capitalized, all one word. Found it. <laughs> found the map. Uh, I can be found on Twitter at BrockGorton99. The B, the G are capitalized. Follow us on Twitter at, El- or at, I almost said it, at Elite Tiger Sports. Jesus Christ. <laughs> at B underscore card ENT. The B, the C, and the E are all capitalized in that. God damn, I'm, I'm struggling today. Man. Um, 
next time we'll come to you, it'll be on a Monday. I... And I'm currently ordering the Mizzou vs. K-State official game day shirt as we speak. Dude, I tried to go to the Tiger Team Store website to try and order stuff, and it was not accepting my payment, so... I don't know what's going on there, so... I just had to re- 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 restart it or something. I don't know. Um... I figured we're probably going to get there early enough that I'll just, we'll end up going there anyway. So. That is all. Yeah. It is the FKU game this week, folks. FKU. So, <coughs> until next week, where Mr. Tommy Haley will be joining us on the podcast. Have a wonderful rest of your week, folks. And slowly and surely. Stay safe. And slowly and surely, as the season progresses and the Tigers' offense going down the field, we are earning our stripes. M-I-Z. Z-O-U.